With this expression now for the sub-threshold current shown in this graph, we can come up with a parameter that allows us to optimize the on current and the off current simultaneously, the sub-threshold swing. Literally, the sub-threshold swing is 1 over the slope of the log of the drain source current versus the gate source voltage shown here. I might mention in the previous lecture, I had this graph with somehow this curve got turned upside down and it was concave up, which uh, actually makes no sense, and it's correct now. And the threshold voltage, remember, is defined as the place where the drain source current is 0 0.1 microamp times the width of the channel divided by the length of the channel. And our goal is to get both high on current and low off current. But if we had a large threshold voltage, as shown in this graph, if it were way out there, it, it would give us a smaller off current because it would essentially allow the curve to go downward even longer and longer. And so it'd be like taking this whole graph and moving it to the right. That's good because we, we want a small off current. But then a problem would be that we would have a small on current as well because then the, the, the point where it turns on uh, will be low. That's no good because we need to charge the capacitors quickly. So with those two competing interests, you know, we're, we will optimize. Just to remind you this expression we came up with last time for the drain source current, uh, which is also worked out in the textbook, and we worked it out. We're using the definition that the, it's at threshold when the current is 0.1 W over L. And when you set the gate source voltage to zero, you have the off current. So you just do that in the expression, and you have an expression for off current. And that's in microamps, because the 0.1 is in microamps. Let's take a look at this factor, e to the q v gate source over a to kt. I want to calculate it for various values of gate source voltage. So for different gate voltages, and I'm going to write the gate voltages in terms of eta. Why? Because you can. Eta is a dimensionless number, very close to 1. So for gate voltage of 100 millivolts times eta, or 160 millivolts times eta, and so on, I will calculate the value of this exponential. What I find is that when the gate source voltage is 100 times eta, the exponential is 47. When it's 160 times eta, it's 470. When it's 220 times eta, 4700. You see a pattern. Add 60 millivolts to this term in these parentheses, and the exponential goes up a factor of 10. Consequently, the drain source current goes up a factor of 10. So what I say is that the, this exponential and consequently the drain source voltage goes up a factor of 10 for every 60 millivolts times eta change in the gate source voltage. That's important. That's It's in red right here because this is very important. It's going to keep coming up. We're going to see it again in a different treatment of the same equation, and we'll start to see a physical meaning of this. But this quantity is important. Uh, write it down that the drain current goes up an order of magnitude every time the gate voltage increases by 60 millivolts times eta. So let's take this expression. We worked it out last time, and by the way, it's also in the book. Let's unpack these exponentials. So take the logarithm of both sides, the natural log, and you get the exponential taken apart. Make sure that you follow that. We can make a graph of log of drain source versus gate source. Subthreshold swing is the inverse of that, the slope of that graph when we're below threshold, which is where this equation applies. So take the derivative and let's look at that derivative because that will be related to then that slope. It's just we have a natural log instead of a log base 10. We'll fix that in a minute. So take the derivative of I drain source by gate source voltage. You know, this is a constant drops out. You're just left with Q over A to KT. And KT over Q is 0.026 volts or 26 millivolts. And so it's a very simple thing. The derivative of the log of drain source voltage is just this. It's 1 over a number times eta. 
quickly we can convert the natural log into a log base 10. You know, this is just always true, and this is a good thing to know, that a natural logarithm of any number is 2.3 times the log base 10 of that number. Try it on your calculator. No matter what that number is, that's true. So I could replace natural log of IDS with 2.3 times log base 10, and I will, so that I can have log base 10, because that's what we put in our graph. I left the sub 10 off of that. And so the slope of the curve that is graphed is 1 over 2.3 kt over q eta. And kt over q, just being 0 0.026, means this is 1 over 0 0.06, I have to multiply, eta. And this is 1 over the slope of the log of the drain current versus the gate voltage. That's what we're calling big S, the subthreshold swing, is 1 over that slope. And so we just found an expression for the subthreshold swing that we've been talking about. It's 0 0.06 volts times eta. Very simple. Eta characterizes the MOSFET. It's a, it's a function of the capacitance, as you'll remember. It's a substantive, meaningful number. And our goal is to keep it small and as close to 1 as possible. Here's a definitional thing we'll work with. The subthreshold swing is 2.3 kT over Q eta, or just 60 millivolts times eta. And I tossed in this per decade, just to liven things up a bit, and also because it's usually there when you see this written. 60 millivolts per decade is kind of a reminder of this idea that we came up with, that every uh, 60 millivolts times eta change in the gate source voltage increases the drain current by a factor of 10. So that's why this per decade is just in there as that reminder. More reminder of what the subthreshold swing is, this one over the slope of the log of drain current versus gate voltage. So that's a nice definition. Now let's go back to our expression up here for the drain source current with this. Let's try to rewrite this expression using the subthreshold swing. So some things here are going to come out. Basically, uh, you're going to take out kT over Q times eta in favor of big S. kT times eta over Q is big S over 2.3. So make that replacement up there. kT eta over Q is S over 2.3. I don't want to keep 2.3 in my expression. I want it to be even more elegant. And I'll make this little observation that where did the 2.3 come from? It was that conversion between uh, log base 10 and natural log. It's literally 1 divided by log base 10 of E. And that's what I'm going to write in my expression. So the drain source voltage is this 0.1W over L, E to the V gate source minus V threshold. I'll combine these exponentials now over the subthreshold swing. Rather than having a 2.3 upstairs, I have log base 10 E downstairs. You could have it either way. Okay, now if you set the gate voltage to zero, you have the off current. And so that's a useful expression there for off current in terms of subthreshold swing. And you can tell from the expression right away, in order to get I off really small, you need S to be really small because then it's e to a minus big number and that's the goal. So small subthreshold swing is desirable. Gives us a nice low off current. So that's a separate thing you can optimize. Focus your threshold voltage on increasing the on current and focus your subthreshold swing on minimizing the off current. And you're not trying to optimize both I on and I off with the threshold voltage in the middle. It takes away the competing interests. So if you want to minimize the subthreshold swing, realize it's just 60 millivolts times eta, so you're just minimizing eta, where eta, remember, is 1 plus the ratio of these capacitances, the depletion to oxide capacitance. And so you're really just minimizing the ratio of depletion to oxide capacitance. You either get the depletion capacitance to be bigger, or you get the oxide capacitance to be smaller. You have things to play with with both of these. And so there's a, there's a lot at your disposal here for minimizing eta and hence minimizing the sub-threshold swing.
and I'll put the expression for eta in terms of those things. So eta is one plus depletion capacitance divided by the oxide capacitance. And we'll use this expression for depletion capacitance from the chapter four and the common sense definition of oxide capacitance being its epsilon over its the thickness. And so there's a lot in here that you can try to, to adjust in order to get eta to be a minimum. I made a little made up graph here of two different cases of the log of the drain current versus the gate voltage. Curve one, curve two, where curve two is the better performing curve because it has both a smaller threshold voltage, which gives you a larger on current, and it has a smaller sub-threshold swing, or rather a larger slope down here, which gives you a nice low off current. And so that's uh, illustration anyway of choosing two different designs. The design number two is the better design. Okay, so we'll stop with that and then we will do an example next.